What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Got my boy Dave on today. He was a dude that, for those of you who read the book, was really close with Adam. So we'll probably talk a little bit about Adam. But the story's not about Adam. It's about Dave. Dave, tell the people who you are, where you're from. Let's get into your story. All right, man. My name's Dave. I'm from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, man. Um, this is time in the feds. Fell in possession of a firearm, man. Uh, actually, I was only out of prison 18 days, dude. I, I went to prison for carjacking. <laughs> Uh, on the state. I did five years in the state for that, man. I uh, actually got out, man. was kind of getting thrown out homeless, you know, didn't have nothing, no, nothing waiting on me, no, nothing in prison set me up for a job or anything when I was getting out. So only thing I ever knew was drugs, man, selling drugs, you know? So immediately I'm, I'm out, got some drugs and, you know, I'm grinding 18 days out of prison, man. I get into it with some dudes, man, trying to rob me, get a shootout with these dudes, man. Fucking, uh, I dip out, you know, before the police get there, they end up running down on me at the gas station. The cops do, you know, got the uh, description of the vehicle, run down on me, get me, man, fell into possession of a firearm. Um, gun was manufactured out of state. Uh, they don't make, there's no gun manufacturers in Indiana. So any gun in Indiana can be a federal crime, uh, interstate commerce. So that's what, what made it go fed. Gave me 86 months, man, in the feds. That's when I met Adam, went to USP McCreary. That's where I started my bid. So you're in McCreary why Adam's there. Is he kind of like the shop caller when you walk in? Oh, yeah. You know that. Yeah, he, he well, for the white boys, <laughs> for the white boys there at McCreary, you know, I mean, you know how to hit. They got the independence, which is usually your Midwest states, your other states. And then you got the New York, Boston homies. You know what I mean? We we pretty, you know, you guys all pretty much run together, all the New England states. Um, So Adam had that. Adam had the New York, Boston. And actually, he had the independence on that yard, too. <laughs> really, he anybody that wasn't a gang member, Adam was running on McCurry. Who ran that yard over there? Uh, shit, really, that's what you had. You had the arm dudes. I don't know if you ever met any of the dudes for other uh, arm. Uh, a dude named Bama. He was a general arm. He was running the yard over there for them. They had the ABTs over there, which nobody ever liked them. <laughs> Uh, and then you had Adam running the yard for the independence in the Boston, New York card. Uh, I'll tell you who else was there too, Chad. Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, Freddie, that uh, one of the guys that hit old Whitey Bulger was Freddie. His brother, Ty was there with us. And, uh, Molly the college his nephew was the one of the ones that jumped on Whitey too, I think. And, uh, uh, he was there, the uncle, Molly college He was there, uh, McCurry with us. Let me ask you this about Adam. Like who ran the yard for the white dudes there? Adam. For the gang members, everybody? Yeah, well, uh, gang members was a dude named Bama. He ran the arm, but they all respected Adam. <laughs> you know that. I know that, but maybe the people don't. Um, oh, okay. Let me ask you this, though. You walk in there, Dave. How old are you when you walk into federal prison? Uh, That was 2017 when I got convicted finally. I was 38. 38 years old, walking in there, what, pretty much you got to do seven years. You're 38. What's it yeah. like for you to walk into McCrary, man? Man, it was like Twilight Zone, man. You know, I remember when I first walk in, man. Dudes, all the guys are standing around gathered, uh, waiting to see the new guys coming in, you know, and you got all your different races separated, you know. I remember the first thing a dude walked up to me, he was like, Hey, man, you on a white time? I actually didn't even know what the hell he meant. I just knew I was white. So I'm like, Yeah, I guess, yeah. But hey, if I wasn't, I messed up because as soon as you say that, I mean, you need to know right away what you need to be. So, uh, but yeah, immediately, man, I was on white time right there. They asked me, Yep, I'm on white time. What was, so the they, what was the difference between federal prison and Indiana state prison? Well, I'll tell you what, the Indiana state prison, it's not as racially segregated, man. Um, dudes don't, the white dudes sure don't stick up for each other. You know what I mean? My, 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 my state's probably like New York is, uh, it's more of a, a metropolitan city. So it's uh, the, uh, the racial balance is a little bit more and the white guys get punked out a lot and their stuff taken and beat up and jumped on and, and, and don't have their back. Well, in the Fred's, we got each other's back, man. It don't go down like that. You know what I mean? You don't sit there and watch a guy get jumped on by these other races and stuff. So that's a little bit different there than my state. You know, I, man, I hate. So if there's a white dude having an issue in Indiana, you're not going to assist him or what? Nope. Nope. Because you usually got probably about six, seven, eight black dudes on him to one white guy. And you go in there and now you got six, seven, eight black guys on two white guys. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's usually, hey, man, it's less than somebody you know. It ain't none of your fucking business. You know what I mean? Which is crazy. I don't like that. Don't it don't work like that in the feds? No, not at all. You know, we all got each other's back, man. You know what I mean? You you you, you stand up for yourself. If you're gonna fight for yourself, then then you got a guy that's gonna fight for you. 
me ask you about carjacking, right? Because you had a carjacking case. Yeah. What do you think when you carjack someone? You're thinking, I'm going to carjack this dude and sell his car? Like, wh- what's the benefit? Man, honestly, man, the 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 one I was on, man, it's it's really so petty and embarrassing, man. It ain't even, it wasn't even nothing like that, man. I wasn't out trying to make no money or nothing, man. I Actually, man, I was stranded, dude. I got stranded. Me and this chick got stranded, man. I was out partying and everything, man. And uh, we were walking, dude. We got into it with this guy where we were at his house. So we got this stranded. We got to walk in. We were stranded. Finally, I told her, I said, man, we're not walking no further, man. I'm going in this car. We went to the, I walked to the nearest gas station, man. And I snatched some girl out of her car at the gas station at the gas pump. Just kind of like no no weapon or nothing, you know, just strong arm. Hey, give me the keys. Get out the way. I'm taking your car. But little did I know when I did that, a cop so happened to pull up to the gas stop next to me. <laughs> and she's screaming, pointing at me. Hey, you still in my car? I look over. There's a cop, man. I just take off. High speed chase. It gets me carjacking. So you didn't work out. You weren't. You didn't even get to where you needed to go. You ended up in the county. And I was on, you know, I, I, I took some of them Zanny bars that night with that girl. And I don't mess with that crap, man. Them Xanaxes, man, it blacked me out, man. And anytime I ever took them dumb pills back in the day, man, I it, it, I wake up in jail or something. You know what I mean? So that's what it was. Man, I popped them damn Zannies. I was with that girl, and psh, I paid for it, man. Carjacking, you know, something I'd never done, nothing like that. And uh, that's man, it started me on a path, dude. I went there and still didn't learn my lesson, obviously. Came out 18 days, man, just trying to sell dope. Bam. Here I go, man. Seven years. I'll tell you what, I'm lucky I made it out alive. Uh, been stabbed in there. You know, had chances that could have been worse. Let's talk about that. You end up getting stabbed. Where do you get stabbed at? Man, at McCurry, uh, there's a there's a dude, uh, he joined a group called SAC. Uh, wanted, to, uh, wanted to join a gang called SAC or whatever, man. Well, one of the things they got to do to get in their gang is they got to stab a guy. That's, that's their initiation to get into their SAC gang. Um, so this guy here, he, he, he owed a lot of money around the union shit, man. He wanted to, uh, he's running up a lot of the bills, one of the scumbags that can't pay his bills. So he wanted out there. Well, one of the things he told his homies that he wanted to go to, um, um, to, to not ADX. What's the other one they go to Shmoo. He wanted to go to the Shmoo and meet all the big homies from SAC and everything. Cause he's a new, new, uh, protege coming in. So what he did was pull a move on me. I'm in there playing cards. I'm leaving the card room, man. Uh, getting ready to be count time. He slides in on me. Hey, hey, call me face. Call me Fat Dave. Hey, Fat Dave. That's what I had to name him. Big Fat Dave. Hey, Big Fat Dave, man. I'd holler at you, man. Turn around to holler at him. What's up? He said, Hey, I, I just wanted to say something, man. Yanks a knife out of his waistband. Just starts going crazy. I, I stab and stab and stab and some lunatic out of nowhere stabbing. I'm just deflecting, fighting the knife off. Got me one in the wrist. Try to stab me and stuff. Got me a little poke there. I got the knife out of his hand. By the time the cops started running up the stairs, it was over with that fast, man. But just out of nowhere, man. You know what I mean? Just, you know, how it goes. He's just on a check-in move, really. Let me ask you this. How many times did you get stabbed? On that incident right there, I had, uh, I got one, two, three. Stabbing? Are you thinking in that moment, like, you might lose your life? You know what? In that moment, I I didn't. I didn't think anything because it all happened so fast, man. I was kind of shocked. Like, I, I was kind of shocked. Didn't know why it was happening. Knew I wasn't being beat off the line. You know what I mean? Not a chomo, not a rat, nothing like that. So I was actually just kind of shocked trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> what you're telling the people is in federal prison, sometimes dudes will just stab you just to stab you because they want to leave. It's just because they don't want to uh, because they want to leave and go somewhere else because they got a bunch of bills they can't pay and they and they and they there ain't nothing they can do but try to go to a new prison and start over. But they can't just say, hey, I want to leave. Because then they're a check-in. Because then we're going to beat you up everywhere you go. So what they do is they they just run up on you with a knife out of nowhere, stab you. And then when you lock up and go to the hole, they ship you. They split you guys up. So they usually keep you there because you didn't do shit. They, they ship the guy that pulled the knife move. And now he's gone. Now you got to get away from all these people you all, all these bills to for money, for drugs, or whatever. And now he gets to start somewhere else fresh. Now he looks like he went on some gangster shit. And that's why he went to the new spot and he didn't check in. So... Is that the only time you get stabbed? Because you seem like you got stabbed. That's the only time. No, that's the only time that happened to me there. Yeah, that's the only time I got stabbed. But it was uh, that crap at McCurry. Yep. After he stabbed him, dude pulled a move. I had dudes pulled a move on me on, on Canaan. I spent three years on Canaan. You know, I had the yard there, Canaan, for a little while at the end. But you know, they tried to pull a, a administration move on me. You know, politics on me while I was in a shoe and jumped on me, got me out of there uh, to to get me out the yard. You you were kind of the shot caller for the white dudes for the independents at Canaan. No, actually, for the Boston, New York car at Canaan. How the hell that You're from Indiana, boy. Well, yeah, because I run with you. Yeah, but what? 
when I first got to Katie, you know, Adam and all them put me down. Adam and he sent a he sent a letter over in the email, let uh, James on news know from Boston and stamp me, and let him know who I was and that I run with you guys. I've been running with you guys since after a year I came to the feds. I started running New York, Boston with uh, uh, Adam, Tommy Patera, Paulie DeCollegero, and Ty, and all them pulled me in after they I gained all the respect. I ran with them dudes because there was no Indiana dudes. I didn't fuck the only couple Indiana dudes that came to credit were rats and would beat the shit out of them. After that, I was the only one. I was on my own. Adam loved me. I was a little brother to him, man. So if anything was ever go down, he knew they was riding with me. So I said, you know what? Fat Dave's on his own. He don't got no homies here. So you know what? We're going to be his homies. We're going to take a vote. We want to pull a Dave, Fat Dave into the car. And Tommy, Ty, Paulie, uh, Adam, and all the other homies on the yard took a vote. And they voted me in. From then on, I was riding with you guys. So when I landed on Canaan, I said, hey, you know what? I'm Fat Dave. I'm from Indiana, but I ride Boston, New York. I'm not jumping cars. This is how it rolls. I rolled gangsters, put me down. Matter of fact, I got on an email with Adam. Bam, he sent the email. Everybody's seen it. Damn it. That's what it was. So COVID hit. COVID hit in Canaan. So, you know, we couldn't. the yard wasn't open no more, Chad. You couldn't get to everybody. The politics couldn't work like that. So we had to go unit to unit. Well, I was the guy with the most clout in my unit. And Joe Lika was in the unit next to us. Joe Lika told him, Fat Dave's got this car. You guys do what Fat Dave says over in this unit. He's got the car for us in this unit. And then that's what it was. Who's going to question that? Well, Joe Lika said it. Oh, Joe Lika. <laughs> Big Joe. That's, that's so, my dog. Let me ask you a little question, right? Because I know you got pictures with Joe Lika, too. Let me yeah. ask you this. Tell the people what it's like to be a shot caller in prison, bro. That's a headache. <laughs> It's a headache, man. Uh, you got a lot of uh, a lot of drama queens around there, man. But I, I tell you what, it's it's not an easy job, man. There's a lot of responsibility. I tell you what, you I think I Adam when I, when I say this too, you know, they that the, the movie Spider Man <laughs> when he says, you know, hey, with great power comes great responsibility. I tell you what, man, you believe it or not, that that's all true in there too, man, because you got a lot of guys' lives in your hands, man. A lot of guys' safety and well-being is in your hands when you're a shot caller. You're call, you're pulling the trigger. You're saying, hey, go beat this guy up, beat him off the yard. Hey, go stab this guy, maybe. Or, hey, this guy's a chomo. you got a lot of people's responsibility in your hands, man, and people's lives are actually in your hands, too. You ever think about when a dude comes in that they have to, you know, beat off the yard or stab? You ever think, damn, if I send this dude, he might, you know, he might, they might kill him. And he might yeah. end up a life sentence. You ever hear? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely have. And actually, we caught a guy couple of guys caught a case in the end, man. I had him put a uh, hit on uh, the guy was a rapo, man. He's from Boston, man. A guy named Josh here Canaan. He was the shot caller. That's actually, I took his position when this happened, but, uh, he was one of my best friends, man. And the cops ended up putting him out there, man. He'd been there seven years, dude. Uh, a drug. He, he was a drug, drug dealer, but uh, he'd been there seven years, man. Well, they pulled him up on the computer finally and showed us, man, he was a rapo back in a state case years ago and uh, had a, a child rape and breaking and entering or some crap, man. So anyway, I had the dude to hit him, man. And well, they hit him right real close to the cops, man, and, and real close by skin me. So he put an outside case on him at Cana, man, just recently, man. Dude caught two extra years over it. Wasn't nothing major, but and didn't kill Josh or that. But like you said, dudes can catch extra time, man. It could have been worse. He didn't die. But yeah, they definitely caught extra time just for that. And I felt bad that I caused that, you know. He ended up getting stabbed? No, he didn't. You know, I didn't see a lot of stabbing at Cana, man. McCurry, it was all stabbing locks. No fist fights at Canaan, all stabbing him. Let's go, let's go back to McCrary. That's where Adam's pretty much the shot That's right. the white dudes on the yard, right? I mean, Adam has a lot of power. Wherever Adam sure. goes, he's, he's a tough dude, well-respected. He's a big dude, and he's a danger yeah. if he has to be. Oh, yeah. For sure. Ever see Adam personally put in any work? Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, I, heard. I have early in his prison career, right? Yeah. Well, so what was it like when... Adam had to call a shot over there. People listen or people volunteer. Like, I'll do it for you, Adam. Oh, yeah. People are volunteering to do that. Yeah, people want to do that. Sure. But, you know, what happens, they're, they're waiting to hear for him to give the order. <laughs> like, people look up to him like like he was their dad? Sure, I looked up to him. I looked up to him like he was a, a, a older brother, a, a, a role model, a father figure to me. Honestly, I didn't have one growing up, man. And when I got in there... In that environment, he was that guy, Papa Bear. <laughs> That's Papa Bear. <laughs> Talk about brotherhood, right? There's a lot of dudes in prison that, you know, people are in there for violence. People are in there for selling dope. But there becomes a kind of like a brotherhood in there where you're like, these are your people, man. You love these dudes, right? Hey, man, we're on the battlefield together, man. We might fight in, uh, next side by side, fight together on the battlefield. <laughs> Die together, stab together, you know what I mean? Well, that's that's where I'm going. I mean, were you willing to stab for these dudes? Oh yeah, heck yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. 
for sure. I was right. ready to stab, die, and not leave prison with them dudes, man. I didn't have nobody out here waiting on me, Chad. I didn't have nobody miss, man. My mom died. Everybody was gone. I was homeless out here. My family's in there. That's why I still talk to them to this day. Adam calls me every day. Joe Lika calls me every day. Those are my family. You had a seven-year sentence, and you were willing, like, if you had to, to never get out of prison. That's right. Those are my brothers, man, my family, and they're not getting out. That's, you know, that's something that people don't understand. Like, dudes are in there with nothing to go home to. Like, these are the dudes that will attack you, right? That's right. That's right. There's a lot of good guys in there, too, man, that ain't getting out. They messed up a long time ago. They just, man, they don't get a chance. Don't get a second chance. I know you've helped a lot of these guys get second chances, man. That might not have never got one. Thanks, Adam man. there when uh, the sack dude stabbed you? No. Uh-uh. Adam had moved on already. Wow, that's crazy, man. It, it, yeah. No, it would have never got down. Well, that guy, he got lucky that he got out of there. And he, they're still looking for him, though. They're still looking for him. Let me ask you this. You ever have to put in work over there for Adam or for anybody? Oh, yeah. I put in work on every yard. Oh, about Adam McCreary? Adam, yeah, I put work there. We, we, we jumped on a rat there. What, what goes through your mind when it's time to put in work? Do you think about, damn, I might get jammed up? Well, I mean, what goes through your mind before you go on a mission? Man, honestly, by that time, I'm ready to go, you know? I mean, after a while, man, when you first get there, you know, and it's time to put the work, he, 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 they start telling you, you know, you got to put this work in, you're going to do this. And at first, you know, you don't know if you're just being singled out or, hey, man, I'm not some crash dummy, man. I'm just going to. But then as you start seeing it go down, you see guys going before you, you realize, man, hey, this is, these guys are all going, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's going to be your turn. You got to go. And it's really a badge of honor, man. We don't want to live with no rat and no child. A lot of these guys are in here because of rats. Hell, I might be in here because of a rat. Or if my daughter's out there and somebody, and somebody molests my daughter and I can't get to him, maybe that one of these guys can get to him. I need him to, you know. So, hey, this is my chance to get this guy. You know, so eventually, man, I, I'm wanting to go. I'm wanting it, you know. Adrenaline pumping, you're like, yo, this is it. Yo, yo, let's get this dude. You know, we we got stuff. We know we're going to the hole, so we're already packed up, ready. We got tobacco, whatever, to make our little bit a little easier back there. He don't know he's going, so he's getting ready to have a bad day. <laughs> but, yeah. So, you know, after you smash a dude, right, do you feel good when you come out of the hole? The homie's like, oh, big day, what's up? Yeah, yeah, pat on the back, man. Got my nacho bowl. What's up, man, you know? It's it's a wild machine, but it's the reality of prison. But it is a machine that'll chew you up and spit you out, right? Right. That's right. What about the one dude from Boston? He had cloud. He was kind of the shot caller before you were there. And then people find out, hey, man, dude's got something in his past. Were your feelings hurt when you found that out? Fuck yeah, my feelings was hurt, man. That, that was one of my best friends, man. He was my close, like me and Adam was close. Me and Josh was close like that. We, you know, you always... You always seem to team up with one guy, you know, in prison, it seems like. You always get one guy that's real compatible with you, and that, that's your buddy more than anybody, you know? That's how Adam was at McCurry. It's how I was with Josh at, at, at Canaan, you know? Yeah, and, so uh, after, after Josh gets smashed, right, do you feel a sense of, like, regret or remorse, or are you like, fuck that dude, he's not who I thought he was? A little bit, but then I still, you know what, to this day, I still regret that because I still love that dude, man. I still I feel bad about that, man, because I don't – what what they had on him, it wasn't, I don't think it was what it was. And they, a lot of times prison politics will blow things up more than it was. This guy says he was 12, she was 11. They got caught by her parents, statutory rape type stuff. He didn't rape her. He's 12 and she's 11. He's not having sex with an underage kid. He's underage. But it made it look like that, you know what I mean? That he had sex with an underage girl, but it's because he was 12 and she was 11. And uh, that's the story he gave. But they're not hearing that. We're not hearing that. It is what it is. It's black and white. You're out of here. Um, but in the end, man, I still kind of feel bad, man, about that guy because I really liked him and I, he was a good guy. And I don't think that he it was anything messed up. You know what I mean? So that was, did, I mean, did you guys talk to him about it? Yo, what's up with this, bro? Yeah, I tried to. Uh, first, he denied it. And I pulled him to the side, being that we we're a little tired or hoping maybe he'd confide in me and not around everybody. And he did. And that's when he told me the story that he was 12, he, she was 11. Um, him and his brother was looting the house. He's ever messing with her while the brother's stealing stuff from the parents and vice. Then the brother's up there having sex with her while he's down there stealing. Next day they're at school telling, uh, bragging about it to the kids, making fun of her. She goes crying to the counselor's office. Uh, parents get called. So the parents get them, says that they've broken her house, stole all her stuff and raped her. 
And so that's what they get him for. Now, his story sounds like it probably was likely, probably what happened. What he said probably would happen. Hey, probably him and his brother over there messing around the girls, stealing the parents' stuff while they're having fun with it. And that's what happened. She got made fun of. Now she says, hey, they raped me and took everything. You ever smash a guy that you kind of like, and then you see him later on in the shoe? And he's like, damn, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's sadly happened. Talking about a lot of bad things happening at McCrary, right? What are some of the things that you've seen in the experience there? Man, I've seen some guys get stabbed up pretty bad. I'll tell you what, honestly, Chad, I want to see some of the, some of the dirtiest stuff I've seen done by, to guys was by the cops. By the cops in the shoe. In the shoe, man. That's where you get down the worst, by the cops in the shoe, the COs. I mean, what have you seen down in the shoe from the cops? I've seen them beat dudes up, man, for nothing. I've seen them come up to the door and say, hey, stop fighting, stop fighting. And the guys are in there like, what are you talking about? We're not fighting. And they start hitting them with pepper balls like it's a paintball gun, just lighting them up just because they pissed them off. You know what I mean? Uh, I've seen them go in there and do that, man, and then run in on the team on them, man, and just, you know, just start an argument with them fighting and then, then and then act like it went too far and then team up on them and then go in there and beat the crap out of them. Hey, I've seen a guy. Matter of fact, Kane, I got one for you. I seen a cop, man. They had a cop, a child molester cop they put in Canaan, and he was in the shoe. Well, you know, you can't, as a white guy, on good standings, you cannot live in a cell in a shoe with a white guy that's not good standings. You got to, you know that. You put me in a shoe with this guy, and he's a chum or he's a rat, and I got to beat him up as soon as these handcuffs come off. We're not living together, right? In front of the cops, whatever. Uh, so anyway, that's what they kept doing to this cop Chomo, but I mean, he's a white guy. So they kept putting him in good white dudes, man. And they, and they were just messing this guy up. I mean, one of the orderlies was cleaning the guy's teeth up off the floor, you know? Well, anyway, they had him four pointed. They had this guy four pointed. That's what they do to you in the shoe a lot. They handcuff your hands and your feet and ankles and they four point you and leave you like that. Then they sit your tray in there right out of reach and say they fed you and all that kind of crap. Well, anyway, that's, they was coming in there with him four pointed. They was smacking him with a phone books and the nuts and they was smacking him in the face and torturing him and stuff. And I guess he came up, uh, the chap lady finally came around. He was crying to her what they were doing to him. And she exposed and told on him and they finally got him out of there. But that's the kind of stuff they do to you in the shoe and get away with it, man. What about on the yard? What was some of the craziest things you've seen on the yard? I've seen some dudes get stabbed up, man. I've seen, I've seen three people get killed, man, since I've been down dead. And dudes that had outdates, <laughs> dudes that were going home in months and that never got to go home. What's it like to see someone get killed on the yard? What does it do to you internally? Man, it makes me sick, man. Uh, I remember feeling sick to my stomach, like when you're falling and you get that in the, man, butterflies in your stomach, sick, man. Just, just sad, man. I remember praying for this dude's family, man, just praying that he didn't get to go home, man, and praying to give them the strength of what they're getting ready to deal with, what they're getting ready to find out. I remember feeling bad that the prison was lying to them about how their person died. You know what I mean? About how this person died. They're not, they weren't being truthful. Who was that at, where they weren't being truthful? Canaan. Who was it Who who was it that you're talking about? Man, this guy died, man. I'll tell you what, man. The, um. This guy's got a cell fight, man, and uh, uh, the New York guys, uh, the New York, the the black New Yorks. Um, anyway, anyway, they got in a cell fight and everything, man. And uh, one of the guys hit his head real hard on the on the uh, on the floor, you know. And uh, I guess when he did it, the guy said, "Man, I'm sleepy." You know what I mean? Well, they, so they laid him down. He went to sleep. Well, the dude never woke up. So hours later, when they checked on him, he was stiff. And they're like, "Oh my God, this guy's dead," you know. So they went and. Told the CO, the one CO that was real cool that never did any rounds, they said, hey, man, we need you to get up and do some rounds, man. This guy we think's dead. Kind of told him what happened. We need you to kind of find this guy, man. So the CO wouldn't get in trouble. So anyway, so that's what happens, man. The CO does his rounds, da -da -da, finds the guy. He's fucking dead, man. Well, it comes out. Nobody's going to admit that there was a fight or how this guy died. You know, they say, hey, this guy smoked some deuce. But they tell him, hey, this guy's getting high on K2 or something, man. Never woke up from it. So in the end, that's what comes out. Uh, I was there through the whole thing, man. The autopsy came out inconclusive. Uh, what happened to the guy? He died of a concussion, a severe concussion, probably. Because he, he hit his head so damn hard, then he said he's sleepy. Now, I've heard that if you got a bad concussion, you're not supposed to go to sleep. You could die, things like that. So I'm assuming this guy probably died of a severe concussion from hitting his head. But they got it in the thing that he just died on drugs. Now, this guy's family sitting out here thinking he OD'd on drugs, when really he wasn't even probably a drug addict ever. And he got killed accidentally in a cell fight. You know what I'm saying? So something like that, man. And the prison didn't want to find that out. They wanted to hurry up and be done with it. And when Canaan with a young kid from North Carolina tried to rob his celly at knife point, the old man that's got like 30 years in, 
And the old man. I was there for that. Yeah, Chad. That I was there. Yeah. Yeah. He tried to do, and the old man had life, and he tried to hit the old man with a lock. And the old man turned around and pulled his knife out and stabbed his head and killed him. And that kid was getting ready to go home in about six or nine more months, though. I got I got the autopsy picture from him when he's dead, laying in in, in the hospital. And I actually talked to the dude that killed him the other day. Yeah. And I reported, you know, our Kilo. Uh, his name Kilo. Black dude named Kilo. I don't I don't remember what his okay name was, but I have him. I have him. We we did a little interview. I didn't know if I was going to put it out. But he pretty much told me, like, yo, man, these dudes, man, you know, I'm not bothering no one. I mean, he wrote, he's wrote a couple books. He, That's he, right. He, these dudes are plotting on him. Dudes getting ready to go home in six, yep. seven months. And I interviewed yep. his family on my channel. And he's like, yo, man, dudes tried to rob me, and I killed him. Bro, they forced my hand. That's not true. Oh, you talked about the old man. Yeah, he was trying to rob him. I think he said the kid said that. Yes. The kid was on bullshit. That old man didn't mess with nobody. Like he said, Chad, he was real quiet, laid back. They, they was trying to pull some bullshit. And that kid tried to hit him with a lock, and that old man wasn't having it and turned around and stabbed the shit out of him and killed him. And that old man had life anyway, so he wasn't getting out. The kid was getting out. <laughs> yeah, I was there for that, man. You know what? We were locked down. We were, you know how long we was locked down for that? About eight hours. And right back up. We'll get stabbed to death, and then they lock you down for eight hours, and everybody can come out and hang out again. Right back up. As soon as the blood got cleaned up. I feel like they don't care when people get killed in there? But then I feel like they don't care at all, yeah. The only thing they care about is if they're going to get in trouble for it. As long as it's something clean and, and they can cover, they're good. <laughs> How many people with the cops were like in Canaan after the cop got killed and you're in Canaan? I mean, they're pretty nasty over there. Man, you know what? I would have thought that they wouldn't have been. I would have thought it would have been the opposite, wouldn't you? I would have thought, hey, man, a cop got killed over here, man, that, that these guys would treat you a little bit more respectful, man, because there's a lot of guys in here who ain't going home. <laughs> But hell no, it's the exact opposite, man. They're so disrespectful there. That that's the most disrespectful place I was at was Canaan with the staff. And I would think it would be the opposite. I used to call you Fat Dave. But now Big you're skinny. Dave. Why do they call you Fat Dave? Well, let, let me fix that for you. It's it's not Fat Dave, because you got fat and there's everybody who's fat the name Dave can be Fat Dave. I was big fat Dave. Big fat. There's a difference. <laughs> Tell me why. Tell me why. Okay. Uh, yeah, Adam named me, you know. Okay, anyway, that was one of the things Adam named me, man. You know, Adam was my dog. Adam's a joker, and I was his buddy, so he's always looking for me. Hey, Dave, hey, you fat shit. I was the fat. I wasn't real fat, but I was the fattest one out of everybody, so, it was, so I was fat. Hey, fat Dave, fat. Hey, you fat shit. Get up here, you big fat shit. Hey, you big fat Dave, he said one time, and he's like, yeah, yeah, big fat Dave, get up here, and it just stuck. And, man, I'm big fat Dave, hey, BFD. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, he was a that's what people just say, hey, Fat Dave, he'd stop him. No, 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 it ain't Fat Dave, that's Big Fat Dave. There's a difference. <laughs> Adam was a crazy dude. We had a kid in the car, which I talk about in the book. Frank, his last name was Fagone. F -A I know Frank Fagone. I know Frank Fagone. <laughs> and, and Adam would call him Fag One. He's like, hey, Fag One, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at with Frank? Uh, you know what? I was at, uh, I was at, at McCurry and Frank had just left there, and my buddy was a good friend of him, and he was still on the email and this shit with him, and so and so we was back and forth with him and shit. So I know who Frank for going was, and he had pictures with him. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, what motivates Dave to stay out of prison? Man, I tell you what, man, um, Chad, this last time, man, I always had my mom out here, man, when I got out, you know, so my mom was my best friend, dude. Um, I always needed her because I was always fucking up and going to prison and having to start over and having to come home, you know, and uh. Man, this time here, I, I did that carjacking, like I said. I was only out 18 days, and then I uh, got locked up, man. And, uh, and about, I don't know, six months after I got locked up, man, she caught cancer, man, and died on me out of nowhere. She was 59, and she was all I had, dude. So this whole prison bed, man, I had nobody to call, nobody to visit me, nobody to put money on my books, man. Um, that's when I met Adam at the beginning, you know. He fed me. He took me in. I had no food or commissary. That was Adam. He did that for me. He, he was my caretaker. He was my provider. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I got close with him. But, uh, but yeah, so anyway, a lot of this I do now, Chad, is I do for my mom, dude. I did that time and I did that and I came out here with nothing, homeless, nobody, dude. And you know what? I got on my feet, man. Surprisingly, I got on my feet, dude. I met a good woman, man. I, I And I landed a little job, dude. And I was in the halfway house and I busted my ass, dude. And I, I started out in the donation closet, man, at the halfway house. They gave me some clothes that didn't fit me, man, and shoes that was hand me down from people who got violated because I didn't have underwear or nothing, man. And that's what I started with, man, in February. And dude, I tell you what, man, I, I make twenty eight dollars an hour in the union now. Um, I, I got a house, a three bedroom house. I got a fiance. I got two vehicles. Um, 
man, I, I, I got a life, man. I got a house here that I love, man. And, and I got a life, dude. And, and so that's what keeps me going now, man. This is what I like, man. Uh, my freedom, my life after living that life that we were just talking about. And yeah, it's funny. And it's fun. We had some good times. Fuck that dude. This is way better. I mean, that, that's the message today, right? This is way better. This is way better. I mean, after you see the things that you see and, and, and then you walk out of prison, I mean, I've seen dudes come from prison being the shot caller. You went from being a shot caller to walking out in the street getting hand-me-down shoes. That's right. That's right. If that don't humble you, what will? Yeah. Hey, man, you, you, said, you said it better than I could. You Definitely know, humbled me. And, and making $28 an hour, what are you doing? What kind of work? A hot carrier, man. Labor, uh, block, block layers, brick layers. Yeah, I carry, I, I, I'm their laborer. You're making good money. Good money. And you're free. Free. And it's legal. So anything you want to say before we get ready to go, man? No, nah, man. I just want people to know, man, there's a lot of good dudes in there, man. Um, a lot of guys that ain't coming home, man, that deserve to come home. I know you're helping a lot of them, Chad, man. And I appreciate it, man. And I know they do too, man. There's a lot of good dudes in there that need somebody to help them, man, uh, that deserve a second chance. And there's a lot of guys in there that, are, that like Adam, man. That, that maybe are never getting out, man, but are doing a lot of good stuff for guys in there, man, that maybe deserve a little bit of a helping hand. And I know that you're trying to do that for Adam too, man. And I really appreciate that, man. And anyway, I just want people to be aware, man, that there's uh, some things need to change, man, in this prison, man. They're so overcrowded, man. They got dudes in here doing life, man, that don't deserve to be gone that long. Joe Leak has been gone 39 years. You know that, Chad? I was talking to him 39 years. He's on his bed over a body. Dude, you know how many people I know who's got bodies who's out uh, that, that would have done 20 years over a body or 25, 39 years, man. That he's done his time. But Joe Leak is definitely, definitely a legend. I mean, when, when dude stabbed me over there at USP Lee, he went yeah. to the hole, but Joe was trying to get him in a wreck cage. Joe was gonna was gonna kill him probably. Joe, that man, he will too. Yep. Hey, he's supposed to call you though, man. He tried to call you. He couldn't get a hold of you. Um, I think they're locked down. So when I, he calls me, I'll tell him I'll talk to you that you're still wanting to talk to him. He never got a hold of you, did he? No, I think. Um, listen, he man, tried he, to call you like four or five times that day, though. That was the day I was sick. I'm, I'm still yeah, sick. I feel a little yeah. Bit. But anyway, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. I want people to know that hey. The life you're living now is way better than that one. So that's right. Hopefully, dudes will tune in and, and, and straighten out before it's too late, right? That's right, man. That's right, Chad, man. Thanks a lot, man. You guys have a good one, all right? Two Blood on the Razor Wire TV with respect until tomorrow. We're out. Mm -hmm.